This is a 1939 Ram supercharger we have here that's just been restored for a customer. And what we're going to do is tell you the do's and don'ts and some mechanical information on the Graham supercharger. The first thing to note about a Graham supercharger is, of course, your rotor is up here in the top area and you have a very long neck here going clear down to the bottom is where our vertical shaft that drives that rotor is. The back bottom here, directly below that vertical tower, they can find two nuts and they'll take them off and take a cover off down there and they'll see a center on a shaft and think that they can drive the shaft out from the bottom all the way through the top, removing the rotor from the supercharger. This, of course, does not work. It cannot possibly work because the rotor has to be the first thing that comes off on the supercharger. So the first thing somebody ever has to do is remove the rotor, which is up here, so you're going to remove the top first and then the rotor. Now this is a case where on this channel I am never going to tell you. I am not going to tell you in an email. I will not tell somebody in person how I remove the rotor. The reason I'm not going to do that is because the tools for doing this don't exist. Graham had a whole series of tools to actually work on this machine, and to my knowledge, nobody's got a set of them. As a consequence, my method for removing the rotor, I figure that what will happen if I ever tell somebody how I'm doing it, is it'll get horrible comments on the internet, I'll get flamed because somebody's going to destroy their rotor and or their supercharger using the method I use. Now, I've perfected this in doing quite a number of them, but in all frank honesty, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. So if you're going to work on one, it's your job first to figure out how you're going to get the rotor off. Assuming one gets the rotor out, you're going to find out that there is a brass seal plate below it. What the average person does by hammering on that bottom shaft with that brass seal plate and everything assembled is they bend the brass seal plate. This particular supercharger, before I started working on it, the brass seal plate was bent up in a dome about an eighth of an inch and I had to straighten that just to even begin to fix the seal plate and put a new center in the seal plate and make it seal the way it's supposed to. The way the seal in the Graham supercharger works is it is an air gap seal. Several people have tried modern seals including ourselves they will not work. You need to restore the air gap seal. The reason the air gap seal actually works is when the rotor is spinning inside of the housing, it's providing pressure, not only through the output, where it's drawing air here, running it around, and putting it out the output, it's also providing pressure below the rotor itself and actually seals the oil out by air pressure because the air gap seal is sized correctly. This unit was designed by a number of engineers at Graham who were professionals and knew what they were doing and you don't know more than they did and can't design a better seal than they designed for their supercharger, even in the 21st century. Now one of the things right now, hopefully Trish will put somewhere up on the top of the screen, the link in case you want to know the history of how the supercharger was designed, there'll be a link to a complete video on that. Going on with the supercharger here, we're going to talk about a few other things. When I got this one, the top area was sealed with a gasket that we made, but also we had supplied the gasket and unfortunately the owner had used silicone with the gasket. That is absolutely the wrong material to use to seal any of the gaskets on a Graham supercharger. There are two reasons for this. Reason number one, silicone, if it comes loose and gets into the system of the supercharger ever, we have a very thin copper line back here on the supercharger that feeds the top of the supercharger oil. A single little piece of silicone can clog that line and the supercharger will be starved of oil at the top and within a matter of seconds you will actually destroy it. So no silicone for that reason. Here's the number two reason. Silicone is absolutely not fuel proof. Your carburetor sits on top of the supercharger and draws air and fuel into the supercharger, thereby destroying any silicone that you've used to seal it with. You cannot use silicone. The correct material to use with the gaskets, which we supply a complete gasket set you can buy from us, the correct material is Aviation Permatex. You can get this at auto supply stores. It is literally the stuff approved by the FAA to use in aviation on aircraft engines. 
If it's good enough for them, it's good enough to do a Gram Supercharger. That is the only material we suggest that you seal a Gram Supercharger with. Now let's look at some other things besides the fact that you must remove the rotor first before you even begin disassembly. There's also a series of other parts on that vertical shaft that have to be taken out to disassemble it. One of the things to note about the vertical shaft is the reason people think that they can hammer on the bottom of it is they're actually looking at the bottom of a shaft that is created that was turned between centers at the Graham factory. The reason they did that is if you see the shaft out of the supercharger, it's extremely complicated and they went from machine to machine to machine with each machine operating a certain operation to finish that shaft and by using turning between centers, they constantly keep everything concentric even though they have to change setups to produce that particular part. This tube up front that we've got on this 39 supercharger is the oil fill tube. The oil fill tube on this one when it came in was installed upside down. Somebody had drilled a hole in the top and bottom. They, for whatever reason, I can't even tell you why they had a screw on the bottom end as they saw it. And they had one at the top end with a chain holding this particular little cap on. The cap is actually spring loaded. It doesn't need a chain. And the reality is, is the way you know which end goes in the bottom is the bottom end is actually serrated. The serrated end goes into the bottom right here into the casting. This should be possible to pull out by hand, but it shouldn't be loose either because the serrated end should actually hold it in place. So this is always the serrated end. This particular end of the supercharger, this particular casting, has one, two, three nuts that are put onto studs. And these holes in this casting are extra large. They're much larger than the studs. The reason for that is, is this is the adjustment for actually setting this particular unit against the gram block because everything back in the 30s would have needed an adjustment to get things to line up right. You have an adjusting screw, a square adjusting screw down here with a nut. You loosen the nut. You can move the adjusting screw with these particular three nuts loose and you can change the height of the supercharger relative to the drive system coming into it on the opposite side, which is absolutely necessary in order to line it up. This drive system right here, this is part of the supercharger drive system that came with this particular unit. It is a relatively uh, simple but limited universal joint. And because it's got rubber pieces, you'll get a little bit of flex, but basically you must be aligned here, which means you have to control your alignment back here, as I've explained on this casting. Another thing that happens with Graham superchargers is right here at the end where you've got your drive coming in from the front of the engine, this particular seal that's located on this end is made of unobtainium. You cannot find them. Every time I redo a supercharger, I re-engineer this area to come up with a seal that will fit relative to Graham's drive because there just isn't anything you can find anymore that actually fits it. They're not made. It seemed to be a very odd seal that they were using at the time. Over here, I'm going to have Trish move around to the end. We're going to show you a couple of things very important. This is the correct way for your assembly to be, the correct line size going up to the top, the copper line here. Do not enlarge this line size, you enlarge this line size, you get too much oil at the top, and you'll put oil in the supercharger. Do not change what they've done originally. This particular assembly, this is your input coming directly from the block. This is where your oil sender must be put. If the Graham engineers wanted the oil sender here, there might be a really good reason. The really good reason is, is if no oil goes up this line, it takes just seconds to destroy the top of the supercharger. So they want you to know right here, that that is where your sender goes, so it always goes here. There's no reason to locate the sender somewhere else on the car. Locate your sender right there. Another thing that's important about these superchargers is when I send them out, or if you even redid your own, they start out effectively dry, even though they've got assembly lube in them. This particular line going to the top, you must put pressurized oil in the top of that before you start the supercharger. So you're going to have to remove it, hand pump some oil in there, making sure the top of the supercharger is oiled. Coming back around to this side, as we talked about the oil tube coming down here, the reason the oil tube is on the supercharger is because it guarantees that you fill the bottom of the supercharger with oil before you fill it into the engine, because this also goes directly to the engine. 
This is another safety point so that the engineers made sure the supercharger was oiled on the bottom and the top in order that it would not instantly basically be worn out because your vertical shaft runs in three different babbitted bearings. And that was one of the things they did to make the superchargers work at a relatively modest price compared to other supercharged cars. Another thing you should know here is when you come across and you have your output, this particular end is the output end, and I know Trish will give us a shot of that. particular piece came with the supercharger. This is not the way to seal the output of the supercharger to the crossover tube and you can see there is silicone on that. This is a seal like you would use an exhaust system. It will not work for this. The original seals used where they're trying to use this up at this point on the supercharger, the original seal is actually a piece of rubber. Nowadays, we're making Viton O-rings that can be used to seal it, and the Viton is fuel-proof. It's what's used in airplanes again also, and we make a custom O-ring that's available on our website now uh, for purchase. It's exactly what you want in order to seal that crossover tube. This won't work. You will not get a seal. You'll actually get an air leak there, and you don't want to do it that way. Right here on this supercharger top, there is... A piece that does not belong here. This is your water inlet where I'm putting the pencil at the moment. But this particular piece right here that's blocking off a port, that port should not be blocked off. This should be removed. Now I've left it in there on this supercharger because I don't know what this person has got exactly in their car. But this is your vacuum port point to control your windshield wipers and or your windshield washer if you have the optional windshield washer on the car also. That's where your vacuum port actually goes, right there on your supercharger. Other things to note, remember I said that this is adjustable. This end, well the entire supercharger is going to go back to this customer with everything sealed but this end. This piece, I do not have the actual aviation permatex in here because this has to be removed, put the aviation permatex in, and then adjust it to fit the car. It'll always be that way because this adjustment will vary from engine to engine. And so this cannot be sealed at this point when it comes to somebody. Everything else is sealed, but not here. This is not sealed. A couple of other things going on here. These original screws on this side, I put them back on. That's what the customer had. I understand why they would want to use Phillips, which is what I would do too, because in the car you cannot see these. Originally, of course, they were not Phillips. They didn't have them at the time. They were slotted. But this is for the little tower that gives you your shaft going into your carburetor. And that's your mount for it. And since you can't see them in the car, I think it's fine to use your Phillips screws here to make it more user-friendly. This particular block on the supercharger is not normally something that is sent with. The customer sent it with, so I've refinished it. The block, though, is very important because it goes to a little bracket on the top of the engine. The reason the block must be there is if it is not there, we have found that superchargers crack in this area. So right where you see that they are basically, you can tell where they had two different pieces of sand that they were putting together to make their sand casting, they'll break in that area if you don't have the block and have your bracket here. And given over time, it seems to be pretty much a problem. So that's why the block is there. So it's important to have that there in the end also. So that gives you a little overview on the supercharger. Some things not to do and some suggestions on things to do. And the reality is, is this is a very precision piece of equipment. The tolerances used in it are in the thousands and in one case, one one thousand is the total tolerance. There are people I've seen on YouTube that could tell you, yep, I bet that machinist can do it. This is put together so you can stick it on the car and it's going to run as long as you're probably ever going to own that car and a lot longer because most collector vehicles are not used very much. 
Uh, when we send them back, if you take care of them, it's probably worth 50 to 100,000 miles easy. It is my recommendation that you run an oil filter on these engines. This particular supercharger was a perfect example of why it was full of grit. Because back in the 30s, they seemed to be a little behind in the idea of yet filtering the oil enough. And the grit caused by carbon, etc., is really hard on the internals of these superchargers. So do run an oil filter on your supercharger. Mm -hmm.